With Donovan Mitchell out for the third straight game due to a hamstring injury, the Cleveland Cavaliers got an impressive overtime victory last night over the team that was holding the East's second seed, the Philadelphia 76ers. With the Cavs now having won four straight games and three games without Donovan Mitchell, it has me asking which starter needs to be removed from the Cavs lineup and what type of problems they'll have going forward. If you guys enjoyed the video though, then please give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, then hit that subscribe button and notification bell. So as mentioned before, the Cleveland Cavaliers played their third in-season tournament game last night and got a big overtime victory over the 76ers in Philadelphia as they won by a score of 122-119. to The Cavs were without Donovan Mitchell, like mentioned, as he missed his third straight game, and the Cavs were also without key rotation piece Karis LeVert. The Cavs have now won five of their last six games, and last night, Jared Allen, rookie Craig Porter Jr., and also Darius Garland came up huge for them. Allen finished with 26 points and 13 rebounds, as well as the game-winning basket. Craig Porter Jr. had 12 points on 5 of 9 shooting with 9 assists and a plus 21 plus minus rating. Then Darius Garland was the star of the show for the Cavs, dropping 32 points on 40% shooting along with 5 rebounds, 8 assists, and 3 steals. The Cavs are also undefeated when Darius Garland drops 25 points or more in a game. While I don't want to bash Donovan Mitchell, you can't say the same for him as the Cavs are 4-3 when Mitchell drops 25 points or more, opposed to Darius Garland who's 3-0 when dropping 25 points or more and nearly was 4-0 as he dropped 24 points in the Cavs win over the Warriors on November 5th. Now I don't think Mitchell is the issue as you can see here. Mitchell actually has a positive 2.8 net rating when on the court without Darius Garland, opposed to Garland's negative 3.2 net rating when on the court without Mitchell. And the fact that Garland and Mitchell have a positive 10.3 net rating when sharing the court together is a positive to see for the Cavs going forward. The problems arise when the Cavs put their most used starting five on the court together of Mitchell, Garland, Struess, Mobley, and Allen. While that lineup has only managed to appear in five games together due to injuries, rest, etc., that appears to be the starting unit the Cavs will be going with going forward, and they have a negative 0.8 net rating per game despite solid shooting clips of 51% from the field, 43% from three, and nearly 80% from the free throw line. The lineup also has accumulated a negative 7.71 total net rating in their 60 minutes played together, which of course is not good whatsoever. However, when you start taking starters out, things improve for the Cavs. Taking Allen out of the lineup and going small with Mobley at the five, the Cavs have an absurd 49.6 net rating and a wild 88.4 defensive rating in 33 minutes played. When taking Garland out, the Cavs have a positive 35.6 net rating and once again an incredible 88 defensive rating in 23 minutes played. Last season's starting lineup of Mitchell, Garland, Okoro, Mobley, and Allen had a positive 7.28 net rating, and they haven't been able to play a single minute together this season, so I'd be interested to see that unit out there together once again once they get everybody healthy. Another group of five guys that haven't played together this season is if we replace Okoro in that lineup with Dean Wade, and last season in 42 minutes played, the Cavs had a positive 16.1 net rating with that group. And going back to how the Cavs have struggled with a dual guard and dual big man lineup, the unit was actually at their best when Mobley was off the court, and the lineup with Okoro was at their best when Mobley was off the court as well. So it just seems the starting five with Struess or just having both of their star guards or all-star caliber big men together just isn't the answer. However, one player who seemed to produce great results with those four guys is Karis LeVert. Last season, the Cavs had an incredible 102.4 defensive rating with those five guys and a great plus 15 net rating overall in 231 minutes played with that group of LeVert in there with them. This season, that same group has only played nine minutes together, so take from this what you will, but they've produced great ratings with their 24.8 net rating, 110.5 offensive rating, and a tremendous 85.7 defensive rating. So while that sample size has been small this season, they look great together last regular season. They did lose three straight games with that starting lineup to the Knicks in the 2023 NBA playoffs. However, and surprisingly enough, in 73 minutes together in the 2023 playoffs, that lineup actually had a positive net rating and outscored the Knicks when on the court together. The problems seemed to arise when that lineup was off the court for the Cavs, and they even improved a bit when they went small with Mobley as the five, as you can see here, as they had a positive 12 net rating with Allen off the court in that series, despite only being together for 12 minutes. Regardless though, it doesn't seem like the Cavs are going to trade one of Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, or Allen. And with that said, 
I think it should be Levert who moves up from the bench to the starting unit. As Craig Porter Jr. has shown, he may be ready to be thrown into the fire and run the bench unit himself. And with Struess, who would go from the starting lineup to the bench unit with Porter Jr., I think the Cavs bench would be fine as lineups containing Porter Jr. and Struess have garnered a 3.3 net rating in their 67 minutes on the court together this season. So it seems that should be the move for the Cleveland Cavaliers going forward. Now, the Cavs sit in 8th place in the East currently with an 8-6 and six record, which isn't the greatest. However, they've played the 4th hardest schedule of any team in the entire NBA and also have been a bit banged up this season as Mitchell, Garland, Allen, Porter Jr., and Okoro have all played 10 games or less out of the total 14 games that the Cavs have played. So I think the team is a bit better than their record shows and it's going to come down to the Cavs head coach, J.B. Bickerstaff, trusting his gut and making some of the changes outlined here today. As of right now, the Cavs will play the second easiest schedule for the remainder of the season. And with that said, I think they can afford to make some changes and experiment a bit as they can't afford to have a disappointing playoff run this season, just like they did last season, as they'll have a lot of important choices to make in terms of decisions on players coming up. And next season will be their last where they control the fate of Donovan Mitchell as he has a player option and can opt out in the following offseason. So the Cavs have a lot of flaws, but they've been a bit banged up and still have shown off how great they could be if they make the right adjustments and now everything falls on head coach J.B. Bickerstaff, whose name has been in rumors recently to be fired. So it'll be interesting to see if the Cavs look deep enough into the lineups that I've shown today, which I believe can bring them the best results going forward. Anyway, though, let me know in the comments what you think about the Cavaliers, any players, or any topics that I talked about today. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, then make sure to give it a like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'm SCJ, and I am out. Peace.